afternoon, everyone. This is Cynthia Motters with Army Pink. Thank you for joining us. Um, just a little brief intro on Army Pink for those who aren't aware. We are a brand that is shining a light on abuse. And um, we donate a dollar for every pendant sold, our peace pendants, to peace over violence. And that helps someone escape uh, violence via transportation. And we have a podcast where we have various um, guests come and join us. And the topics are all over the board. So some of them are people that have unfortunately experienced abuse and they tell us their stories and we learn from that. And um, they come out on the other side, thank God. And then other um, speakers have been doctors and psychologists who help us learn to reflect and, and look at ourselves and manifest a healthier life, be aware of red flags, things like that. So we hope that this is a tool, this channel in educating um, people on abuse and, and ways to spot it. And today is a very unique speaker, Christine Marie. Thank you so much for joining us, Christine. Well, thank you. Yeah, and um, digging into your story a little bit, um, we haven't really talked on this subject, so I think it's fascinating, and um, it's all—it's not all about polygamy, but you are an educator. I, I think you help women who have been in these kind of trauma situations, correct? Yes, I even help women that are still in plural marriages. Still in it, yes. And I'm I'm fascinated to get into it because I'm sure that the natural question is like why, but I'm sure when you have a deep rooted religion behind you, um, I'm I'm I bet that would play a factor in this and why. And so you know, learning more about that and and kind of just going through those motions. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about your story and how, what got you here, because I think you had a marriage, right? And you got divorced and then this new person came in your life. Um, can right. you tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So when I was divorced, I was looking to be the very best Mormon that I could become. So I had a vulnerability in that I wanted to do whatever God wanted me to do because I had done this, this sinful thing by getting divorced and oh, yeah. you know spending a little time sowing sowing my wild oats or being a Gentile as as they say around here. Mm -hmm. So I was lured into a situation with a man who proclaimed himself to be a prophet. Mormons believe in prophets. Mm -hmm. They have one today. Uh, fundamental Mormons believe in prophets. Prophets speak for God mm -hmm. in their in their view, and as I once believed. So when I met this man who said that he was the new prophet, and I was not like some great religious scholar to really dissect all the ways that he could be a scam, I was particularly vulnerable to believe him because I had had a dream where I thought that the man that would be my forever husband uh, would, I saw what he looked like in his dream mm. and this man looked like him. Oh, so wow. it was completely magical thinking, just coincidences. But I let that coincidence overrule my critical thinking and it had a lot of sway in my decision making because I thought that was from God. Yeah, I thought if God was you telling took that me that as a sign, like, oh gosh, here's this this guy that looks like the guy in my dreams. And I bet also, like you said, you you were divorced and maybe you felt shame with that, and so you felt you wanted to like be the best you could be and absolutely open yourself up, and you were going to redeem yourself and. Maybe right. that guilt played into this too, I would imagine. Yeah, I think so. I think you kind of nailed it there, mm -hmm. Cynthia. So mm -hmm. I I am eventually came to believe what this man was saying. I didn't instantly buy everything he said, but he had actually accomplices helping him, you know, pose as believers and verify like fake miracles and different things, which I fell for. Mm -hmm. It's embarrassing. Was he older? Were, what were your age differences? No, he, no, he wasn't older, but he had power over me because 
he, you know, he was claiming to be this prophet mm -hmm. and prophets, you don't, you don't disobey prophets. And right. once I believed in him, he had complete control over me. So he put me through tests one, like one test at a time and they would get progressively worse mm -hmm. until, you know, until there was a certain point where my critical thinking was completely turned off. I remember uh -huh. at a certain point when I said, I can't even make my own decisions anymore. I no matter what he says, I have to do it. It was like there was a point of no return when I had passed so many tests that my brain would not let me examine the red flags. Did you right. do you think that's a form of brainwashing? Because like you got all you know convoluted, and did you know you were being tested along the way? Did you think oh, this feels like a test? Oh, he would say it was a test, so I absolutely oh. know. Oh, right. Okay. So I had to pass this test to, you know, please God. It's a yeah. very common pattern among cult leaders who are trying to gain power over like new believers. It starts with the honeymoon phase, the love bombing, the recruiting when, you know, you think this is the answer I've been looking for. He is what I imagined God would send, you know, in a perfect world. And he looked like the man in my dream. So it just, you know, I believed what I wanted to believe. And right. I did not, what I did not do was, what I did not have was an understanding of how con men work or sociopaths or psychopaths. Right. And because I was generally, you know, this honest person I could not imagine that this man who was preaching all these good things about helping the poor and, loving you sure. know, and, you know, very Christ-like admonitions. So I had him on a pedestal and I could not imagine that he would be doing it for fun, right. for entertainment, for money, or that he was turned on by the power he had over me. So... What do you I, and think I, his I, end goal was just control or what? Well, he was trying to break my faith because by that time I was really a strong Mormon again. You know, I had my doubts and I had had my time when I left the church. When I came back, I came back with a gusto. So mm. he was trying to prove to me that there is no God and he he had been successful at mm. getting other women that he had dated, apparently all of them to, you know, to come out of religion and become atheists. Mm -hmm. And for some reason he could not break my faith. Mm -hmm. So what he did instead, mm -hmm. instead of trying to break my faith, he then said, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to present myself as a prophet. And so I have so much power over her and I will test her until she says this cannot be true and just leave religion altogether. So, so were, I think it, so were you not going to church then once you kind of had this relationship with him? Did the church going stop? It did. Yeah. It okay. Did. So I didn't have real checks and balances. I was just reading my scriptures and reading the scriptures that he had, you know, presented as he had translated these you know, divine scriptures from God. And I was reading them back and forth, back and forth. And I mingled together what he wrote with, you know, the beliefs of my childhood. And it all came together in an emotional ex experience that I interpreted as, you know, this is God telling me that this is right. That he is a prophet and God is talking to him. And right. Yeah. You know, so once I had, made enough sacrifices I did not want to believe that all these things were in vain mm -hmm. so I did not want to examine the red flags that I saw and the doubts that I had well that's because, interesting yeah because you was that a reflection on yourself like you couldn't you couldn't think that oh I, I could have been taken no this is I, that's interesting well it's because I mean, there's something, there's a psychological principle 
mm-hmm. called loss aversion, mm-hmm. which like in an economic situation, when you have invested enough money in a certain stock, mm-hmm. there's a tendency to want to keep investing in that because you don't want to lose all your money. I w- I had invested so much s- psychologically, spiritually, mm-hmm. financially, yeah, and even you know, uh, physically and in, you know, with things that I would have never done or in a million years, but because he required so much and one little step at a time, each sacrifice didn't seem that big. It just seemed a little bigger than the one before until I was so far in that to imagine that it was all in vain would have made me suicidal. Right. So my brain protected my life by not letting me oh, examine the truth. Wow. Because, and I was suicidal. Yeah. You know, at I, a I, I can point. relate to that. I mean, I never looked at it that way in that that perspective. But it's interesting. I mean, it's not like your situation, but I've had things happen where um, I suppressed them and ignored them, uh, but they. You know, I had a situation where someone was doing me wrong kind of in business, but I didn't want to believe it because I didn't know how I was going to handle it. And I, and it hurt my heart and it hurt my mind. And so I kept putting it away, just thinking, no, 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 you know. Yeah, exactly. That's a very good analogy. So when I saw red flags, my brain said, the problem is not him. The problem is me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was easier for me to say, I'm the one who's not getting it. I'm the one who's unworthy right. than to imagine that this man that I had on a pedestal that I saw do good things. I could not fathom that he was doing it uh, as a very cruel hoax that almost resulted in that, you know, in the ending of my life. So you were his, you were his spiritual wife, right? Right. Is that the same as a, as a, you know, and forgive my naivete here, as a legal, you know, married couple? In, in certain like offshoots of Mormonism, Mm -hmm. the spiritual marriage is like more important than the legal marriage. Forever in perpetuity. Go to heaven and you're still married. Absolutely. That is a Mormon thing. So I believed it. But once he had me, he then started backtracking. Mm. And um, and that was very hurtful and very interesting. You know, he got another wife. He, you know, had, had these people who were posing as believers. And what happened ultimately is that one of the believers or alleged believers, a man, um, ended up telling me that he was only posing as a believer and he had deceived me because because my prophet had told him if you tell christine the truth she'll die so he played along and other people played along to you know keep me entrenched in this exploitation Mm -hmm. you know which included my body and then it was to when i was psychologically freed from this situation it was as if the entire like imagine that my world was the entire city of new york right and the entire city of new york was lifted off the ground like 400 feet and and then came crashing down around me that is what the world felt like like nothing you know it turned out that all these believers were really just accomplices accomplices and They were posing as believers to help him in his exploitations of me because it was fun. It was it was fun to see how much power you could have over over someone who is so religious that they can't see the truth. And that that was so traumatic that I didn't know. I felt like I was somebody who walked out of the Truman Show. Right. Or out of a video game like I did not know. So they use you, your devout religion and beliefs kind of against you. Like that was your vulnerability. 
and they used it. Now, was there other wives that he was involved with? There were other wives in the pipeline. Uh -huh. So, so to, in my mind, they were my future sister wives. So they were my sister wives, mm -hmm. but none of them were believers. So oh. it was just, it was all just a big hoax. Yeah. So it was so traumatizing to realize that I had been subjected to so much abuse and trauma and that my prophet was really a predator and yeah. that he thought this was just such a satisfying experience to be able to overpower a person's entire life like that. Mm -hmm. So it took me a long time to heal and a decade of studying how the brain works and what, you know, what cut studying about cold psychology yeah. so that I could really understand what happened to my brain. How did my critical thinking go offline? Right. And that led me to really want to help female victims of religious abuse. Mm -hmm. And because there is a lot of sexual abuse mm -hmm. that goes along with religious predators it's a primary motivation oh, i'm just i'm mortified at what i read and see today i mean across multitude of religions um and how it's much true. it's used to abuse sexually i mean it's it's just mind-boggling that's why i was asking you if the church was involved because i thought well surely they would see this or they would be involved but but he kind of alienated you um i think from your absolutely yeah, absolutely. How, how long were you guys together? Less than a year. Oh, wow. Thank, thank goodness. Yeah, so thank goodness. More, you know, in the end, I qualified for services as a survivor of human trafficking as a result of the deceptions, manipulations, and exploitations mm -hmm. that happened during this experience. Did he serve any time? Did he, did you press charges or? I did go to the police and I tried to, to press charges, but he somehow managed to go on the lam oh. and avoid it. And then statute of limitations came into play. And he, so he never served time for what he did to me, mm -hmm. but he did serve time for uh, violating a protective order against an ex-polygamous wife and some other things so mm -hmm. he's not he has a record but he's but still out there uh doing what he does which is not good he is still out there and he's, he's still out there free as a bird yeah deceiving but people he doesn't he doesn't come looking for you or have any kind of retaliation against you well every so often he pops back up and tries to Oh. you know, make sure that I don't tell my story, but yeah. that's not, that's a power that I have. I will tell my story because if you are watching this podcast and you are a person who has been abused by your religion or you've experienced religious trauma, you need to know you're not alone. There are so many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who have been deceived manipulated, exploited by people who gain power over you using religion or some other big life purpose that you agree with. It could be political. It could be, you know, a business purpose. There are many different kinds of cults, but when the leader has like all the power, all the information, the access to all the things you don't have access to right. it's easy to become prey and then to blame yourself because you couldn't see what was going on mm -hmm. and when you wake up you know you see everything and you and yeah. think what in the heck so what but, was your wake up moment was it this other associate who said oh you know i've got to let you know this guy's like he's false he's an atheist he's all these other yes types. yes and there's a lot more drama to this story but it it was this other, you know, this other fake believer who, after he met me in person, had a conscience and said, and he looked at my life and what had become of it and said, oh, my God, 
-hmm. you know, I have to get her out of here because I was being exploited in every way you can think of. And so, so I owe him, you know, my life in a way. And did he help you escape this? Like, how did you get out of this? Oh, you went mute, Christine. Okay, I think I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so. Um, yeah, what was the step to move you out of this? Coming over with a truck. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean. I mean, explaining everything that happened and all the mani- manipulations that he went through and so on. And yeah, it was, it was rough, but. Did he let you I, leave free, like freely, or did you have to kind of pack your stuff when he wasn't, wasn't there? And, well, yeah. he at that time was in jail oh. for violating that protective order against an ex polygamous wife. So I could leave, but the, um, If we fast forward to today, what this motivated me to do after I studied the brain and how the brain works, I I got a master's degree in psychology and business, then I got a PhD in psychology, and now I teach a class on critical thinking and coercion. I teach about cult psychology, and I help men and women understand, you know, how to how to think for themselves how to how wake to, up to this right now are how these to know classes, when they're brainwashed yeah are how these classes to, online or are they uh, physical someone has to go no physical? well I, I just created one uh okay. that i did in person for a number of people but i'm putting it online now oh good so because you know the whole thing here with army pink is to help and provide these tools so i would love it if there is a way um, for anybody listening, you know, obviously they could go to your website, correct? But if you're going to have right. these um, these classes, I think that could be very beneficial if they're, you know, something you can join via Zoom or. Absolutely, I think you know I'm very proud of these classes because I feel as if it will help people stay safe. It mm-hmm. will help people to understand how predators work, what cult psychology is how invisible influences can make you think you're thinking for yourself when in fact you're being absolutely driven by forces that are not your choice and you can't see it. Well, they're taking you on this path, on this journey. Like you mentioned the testing. I thought that was interesting. Like what are some of these invisible influences that, you know, people should be aware of or take note of? Well, 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 so there's the power of the social group, you know, the the love bombing when you feel like, wow, I really, you know, I didn't have that many friends and now I've got this wonderful new family. That is very powerful. There is the power of priming. Priming the brain is when you make, like you use, you you put things in somebody's mind Mm -hmm. or you use visual cues like pictures or words and you let these things play in a person's mind until it comes out sort of as their own idea and they think it's their own idea Mm -hmm. there's the power of suggestion which is incredibly powerful you you know somebody suggests you're going to have this certain experience and then you do and you think aha he's a guru he's right right true right Right. and there's many techniques that that can be used positively as well and but when the manipulation or the influence has a purpose of benefiting the influencer and not benefiting you then it is like malicious influence there Mm -hmm. is also good influence when you have an influencer trying to teach you things but the purpose is to benefit you, not them. Mm -hmm. So there's an influence continuum. So from, you know, from very horrible and devastating to very good. So somewhere in there, you can decide, you know, where this is. Yeah. How this is working for you. Right. You know, and that's some of the stuff I cover in my class as well. 
Okay. But I, I would think like what kind of caught my attention is like, if my husband said, you know, I'm going to give you this test and, and you got to pass it. Now we've got another test and the, the ante keeps going up. I would be like, why are you giving me a test? You know, I no, no. Test. Well, you, you, you would think that as a normal person with her critical thinking skills intact, but when you understand the history of Mormonism mm -hmm. and how sacrifices are required to make it to the ne next level, it's almost like the addiction of a video game. When you play a video game and you get to the next level, you get like this, this dopamine rush and you want to get to the next level. I did so it. It's just, I passed. That's yeah. right. So you, good. <laughs> you, these tests are sacrifices that you make. Yeah. So you make these sacrifices such as, like for me, I had to sell everything that was extra mm. that night. And so that wasn't that hard because it was extra. Well, then the next test was I had to sell things that were very important to me, you know, that I cherished. And that was rough. But, mm. you know, when you think you're doing this for God and it's going to result in your exaltation, you know, you get over your attachment to these personal things and, and once you've done that, then there's another thing and another thing and another thing till you don't even know who you are anymore. Yeah. And you're feeling like, wow, I'm really doing so good because I gave away all the things I cherish to show and to prove where I'm really at with my religion, my God, whatever the prophet. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And it, and, you know, it can be far more severe than even physical things. It can be you know, your reputation, your family life, your, 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 you know, physical dignity. I mean, it can be many things. Mm -hmm. So when you have passed all these tests, you think it's such an investment Yeah. that you, you know, like I talked about loss aversion, you don't want to think that all those losses are in vain. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. things that it really, really hurt you. Right. And so you will hold on to whatever belief you can and try to find a way to say, no, he, he couldn't have done that. He couldn't have meant that. I have to be the problem. Now, how did you rebuild and get so strong and so confident now you're helping others? And like, what, how did you get on that path? Well, when I learned enough about how the brain works mm -hmm. and, and how cults work and cult dynamics and the patterns, then I felt confident that I could help people who'd come out of religious trauma and also um, human trafficking trauma mm -hmm. because I felt like I could help people understand that this was not your fault. You were groomed, you were deceived, there was forced fraud or coercion and let go of some shame, let go of some self-blame. So mm -hmm. I started doing that in various ways and then I got in got into a position where I could really, you know, help people do a deep dive into how the brain processes things, how when you are in a state of fear, your survival brain kicks in, which is, you know, the back part of your brain, and your critical thinking brain goes offline. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a state of fight, you know, flight or flight. freeze, yeah. you you know, you're going to try to survive. The decisions that I made, I made because I was trying to survive. If I did not believe in the prophet and I did not do what he say, said, then my eternal life was on the line. It was terrifying. Right. Yeah, that is true. But it could, be, it could be expanded into many other situations just from a relationship, a coercive relationship. You know, you've invested all this stuff all the you've made all these sacrifices for this man you love or this woman you love and you don't want to think it's all in vain you don't want to think that they're hurting you uh for an ulterior motive mm -hmm. and it's really difficult to just wake up and say oh my goodness i could just freely walk out of here yeah drama bonds don't let you do that no well once they manipulate you so much like you said you lose yourself and then you don't even know what you're thinking and how to take the first step. So I True. mean, as goodness, you had that associate going, hey, knock, knock, uh, this is not looking right. And it made you maybe reflect and, you know, get out of the situation. Um, right. 
Well, I, I think this is so fascinating. I could I could talk about it forever um, and get more insight from you. I'm so glad that you came on today. Can you just share how we can find you, where they can go, how Absolutely. they can take classes? Okay, so go to um, christinemarie.com mm -hmm. and look at the menu. I also have a charity called voicesfordignity.com and you can go there and you can you know, get information on how you can sign up there. That's, I started a 501c3 that helps people through this process. It's not just about religion. Remember, it can be about abusive relationships right. or um, human trafficking or many other situations. Or just somebody are... being manipulated by a partner and controlling and taking power over them and beating them down to where they're losing themselves. Like, absolutely. Yeah. When you get so beaten down and you forget who you are and you have fear of your controller, you're in a bad situation, but you're not alone and you can get away. But it takes, for example, it takes women in an abusive situation multiple times of yeah. attempting to leave before they finally get the courage to leave and stay outside and do what's healthy for them. And we're here for somebody who is struggling with you know, their identity because of some abuse that they have gone through and yeah. wondering what is their life path now? Well, we are here for you. And that includes people who've been publicly shamed and mm -hmm. humiliated and, you know, in cancel culture. Right. And, you know, that is, that was my research. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. my academic research was on um, public humiliation and misrepresentation and the impact that that has on a person mm -hmm. is, absolutely massive yeah so just well, our main goal is to restore dignity by restoring power and choices and you know educating people doing psychoeducation and and i hope you don't mind i'm going to invite our viewers who are watching that if they're listening and they're like well i'm not sure if i'm in that relationship or i'm not sure if i'm being manipulated or tested to maybe reach out to you and have a conversation, um, just having another set of eyes and ears to listen to. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And you can find me on Instagram. I'm okay. Dr. Christine Marie. So okay. it's dr. Christine Marie, and you know, message me. Yeah. Well, Dr. Christine Marie, thank you so much. And I'm glad you're living this healthy, strong life. And thank you for helping people. That's so great. You've turned this into something so positive. And um, I know our viewers, you know, listening to this are going to gain some great, powerful insights. Thank you so much. All right. We're going to sign off for today. And that's it for Cynthia Motter's Army Pink. Thank you. Mm -hmm.